you know, those days when you were working back to back and you just hadn't had a day off in, you know, a few weeks, if you were lucky, because if your story, you know, your stories were written for your character, it was, it was brilliant. You're on one, but you were tired and you're a bit grumpy. Oh, yeah. and storming in, there was this really loud ska music really pumping out and it was Scott <laughs> Nelson next door and I went in and I like banged on the door and I turned into this real nasty school mistress and he and it was like oh mate I'm so sorry <laughs> and then it was the same up the other end with Steve and Mark Wingert they were the same and they get grumpy roles go knock on their door oh it's just great just reliving all these little moments listening to the podcast and, and just being with you now it's brilliant do you remember nat what we did with our dressing room no what do you remember i had this stupid idea but it was actually brilliant it was brilliant of painting our dressing room red no yeah i went yes. out it was bit, yeah our dressing room was bright red I don't you remember me painting it? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. So I got I didn't get bollocked, but oh my god, when we did it, you were helping me. You had a paintbrush in your hand. Oh, stop it. So I was really pissed off because I'd been called to set at like 7 a.m. So I was in makeup at six for some like walk past in the background to do <sighs> with continuity. And then I had to sit all day and I was at the last scene of the day for like two lines. So I was just really mightily hacked off because I was, you know, now I'd just be like, okay, all mellow. But then I was all like, you know, militant and feisty. And I, I shot off to the home base around the corner just for a little browse in the garden section. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to decorate the looking dressing room. So I bought the deepest, reddest crimson paint. It's coming the, back now. The dressing room was like a womb, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was the dressing womb. <laughs> <laughs> the dressing room. The dressing room. And I went in and painted this dressing room red. And the smell. <laughs> it's coming back. Yeah, of paint. And everyone was walking past going to Suzanne. And I was thinking, shit, I probably shouldn't have done this. But it was too late. And you come in and was like, love it, babe. And we had like chandeliers. Do you remember when we had somebody? We went into props and raided props. Oh, yes. And we were back getting mirror. all of these. We're yeah, the mirror. mirror with the cherub yeah. on all gold. Do you remember? Oh, yes, I do. And actually, there was a bit of a war of these dressing rooms. Do you remember? Who was the one that had the waterfall? He had like oh, water it got epic. Somebody, yeah, somebody then wallpapered it. Was it Jeff Stewart? That was it. it he was wallpapered Jeff. it. I think we were all getting into a bit of a competition. Who's got the best dressing room? Because they were a bit crap, weren't they? Yeah, well, they were just basic. And, and it was hard to make. And I just thought, you know what? Changing rooms. Yes. I was ahead of the game there. Well, I could have made I a bloody programme of that. I remember and, the chandelier now. Yeah. And we had it like a boudoir. Oh! Everybody, everybody walked past going, oh, but they were all pissed off that they didn't have the boudoir. And me and you had all these cushions. And it was absolutely magnificent. Fantastic. When, I, when I left, and because well, I left before you, didn't I? I was the end of two thousand and four. Yes, yeah, so I was. I was the end of two thousand and two. So you stayed on a little bit longer. I remember watching all your your stuff on screen. It was very good. I loved the character of DS McAllister. I really do. Wow. Um, but I've got to say to you, what I didn't realise is when I left the bill then. Mm. I left you there. So who replaced me in the dressing room in our boudoir? Do you know what? I think I had it on my own for a while. Right. I can't remember. It was all a little bit like there was so much going on. Those first, well, the first year when you're sort of thrown, there were like, you, I think there, there were four, five different units. There, there were five units sometimes if they had to do pickups and it was bad yeah. weather or... So most of the time there were four units and you'd be thrown on your bus in the morning if you were out on location. <laughs> and then that would be the first time that you met maybe a visiting actor. And there's some of the storylines that, I, lucky De Debbie had some great, those two, three eps. I remember one of the first ones was Tristan Sturrock. Yeah. And he was my sort of love interest. We were undercover together. It all went a bit wrong he was fab but you only meet them 
when you're on, on location or in the green room or in makeup. Yeah. And but you're also doing another episode. So your, it, your brain is really sort of put into <laughs> a variety of boxes. And Absolutely. I'm trying to work out my boxes. <laughs> People say that. Well, my husband says I can't multitask. It's because all my multitasking was used up on the bill. Yeah. That, that's what I say. I'm incapable of it now because I, I reckon you have a quota of multitask in your body when you're born. And all mine was used up definitely when I was on the bill. I mean, it's such a long time ago, Nat. You've got four males in your house. You are yeah. multitasking all the time. Yeah, but if you think back and, and talking like this really does help and doing those Misty Moon catch-ups and the Bill catch-up that we did the other week for uh, Centre Point as well, listening into those anecdotes and stories from other cast members really does help to bring back your memories. But what episodes, if you think back now, without me going, oh, you know, this episode or, or Ollie saying, oh, this director, what episodes stand out for you? I think Britannia Mania with Chris Simmons, that was my first sort of three-parter. That was fantastic. We were at the dog races and I was undercover there. Working with Chris was a hoot. Love Chris. Mm. So that was my early days of McAllister. And then she sort of did a, well, there was always the Meadows backstory with Jack Meadows. That was funny, stringing him along. Did you ever get to snog the gov? Well, he tried to a number of times. <laughs> so is this in the story now, Nat? <laughs> <laughs> in the story, Suze. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, there were a number of times where I think I was like, Jack, what, what are you doing? If, take a few steps back, you know, calm yourself. <laughs> that was on quite a few eps. So they always used to write that sort of little bit of undertone with him. I think she was really manipulating that situation to try and better herself and try and work up the ladder. But when it came to it, she, she, would, she couldn't cross the line with Jack. But he was always there. He was there at the end for her. Once old Chandler had shot himself. I mean, yeah. remember how she got pregnant at somebody's uh, memorial service funeral. Yeah. And I don't know who it was. I was trying to think whose funeral it was. Me and Chandler were in the, in the you know, I mean, really. <laughs> we, we got it on at the memorial service. <laughs> of course, then Debbie had to deal with, okay, she's pregnant. Uh, this is not what she thought would happen in her career. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, she got herself deeper and deeper. And of course, he was, Chandler was in trouble with all of the allegations around him. Jack was always there. Chris uh, Simmons, Mickey was always around. Debbie was, she was a manipulator, but it was all a bit to her own detriment. Things would go wrong. Yeah. She used her feminine charm and it mostly got her in, in situations that she then had to get out of. Yeah. So I think um, all of those intense scenes with Chandler in his office and going into labour and all of that wow when you if I look back at that that was just it was brilliant I loved it absolutely loved it we used to see me in the morning I used to moan about putting the pregnancy seat on but oh you hated that didn't you that bum you'd be like holding it up going I've got to put this on I'm going <laughs> I've got my own that looks like that naturally love <laughs> 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 and I love being pregnant in real life. I absolutely loved it. But that was you? a bit different wrapping that on and, and having to sit in a lift for about eight hours. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I love being pregnant. Uh, do you know what? I absolutely hated it. When I got pregnant, I was a bit like, oh my God, didn't think this could ever happen to me. And <laughs> I, I was sort of in denial for nine months. Well, no, I was in denial for about three months until the first scan. And then when I saw the baby, I was absolutely hysterical, laughing my head off and crying my eyes out, thinking this is real. But I really suffered with my health through the pregnancy. I had, like, my feet were like elephants. My wrists, I had carpal tunnel. I would just vomited the whole time. And then about the week before I had my eldest, it all just sort of went, oh, this is lovely. Oh, and here is the baby. Oh. Um, so I was all right for about a week. But with Freddie, I didn't know I was pregnant for a while and I was going to these, like, hit gym classes where I was you know with the lads at that point I was a, a personal trainer so I was you know doing these push-ups and 
jumping from the floor to these like you know three foot boxes just off my feet pregnant and I was throwing whiteies you know when you're on the floor going I don't know why I feel so poorly and it was because I was pregnant <laughs> and then and then this morning sickness started and I was just ill the whole time Freddie I didn't really like being pregnant oh well I was just in la la happy land and about 20 weeks in I had a, a, a scare and I sort of rushed into St Thomas's Hospital and it wasn't anything awful, but they did scan and they you know, said, do you want to know what it is? Weirdly enough, I picked up a book, one of my millions of notebooks that I have, like with so many notes through my life. Mm-hmm. And I picked it up and this little picture popped out this morning. Suze, I will send it to you. It's hilarious. But it looks like my boy now. It looks like me trying to wake him up this morning and that sort of half little squeezed little face sort of trying to open it looks like him this morning aged oh. nearly, well, yeah it's just ridiculous we've div- we've completely diverted there um, <laughs> <laughs> let me pull it back let me do like a, a really clever link here so when you were pregnant in the bill as ds McAllister, can you remember the name of your baby andrew because yeah. some lovely fan on one of the Misty Moons did say, because I asked Steve and he was like, what? No, I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed he was. And I did think of this today. I was thinking of the, oh, i tell you who else. I love working with Diane Parrish, Eva Shah. So me and, uh, we had quite nice storylines together. We were, they wrote really nice, nice episodes for us. So we, in our heads, we were like, oh, wouldn't this be great? Sharp and McAllister. We had known each other as well before the bill. We worked on a film together with Jason Fleming. Yeah. And so it was one of those like, oh, wow, it's you. Love you. She's a Tottenham girl. Yeah. And lives not that far from my parents. But uh, Diane and I, yeah, we, I, that would have been a, a nice spin-off, McAllister Sharp. I remember. Do you remember the green room that had a smoking room upstairs? Yeah. The that one by the coffee disgusting, point. Bitten, disgusting, disgusting room. room. We were actually all up there one afternoon, and I don't know why. We were all sitting in the smoking bit. And I remember joking with you and Diane about a spin-off of McAllister and Sharp. And we, we went quite in, quite in depth into what the, the storylines could be. And we had a hoot. I do actually remember that. Uh, could, could that happen so what happened to i know you drove you you left the show didn't you die she went off and did mit right so that was paul marquis that then i think they did six eps on that and then she oh, yeah. then i think she went straight into eastenders right so this spin-off could still happen you know, um, you, know yeah. you could it could it could happen it, it's it, it's probably easy. happening and we don't know uh, yeah oh, we could we could write it <laughs> 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 you know what else I found this week? This is really bizarre. I've got boxes of stuff that I'm still clearing out from when I moved years ago. And I found a Burnside business card. Oh. Then I played an awful, it was, she was awful, Mandy Cartwright. Mandy Cartwright. And Chris Ellison and I, oh, the postman's here and the dog's going to bark. Cue. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> On cue. Well, cue. that's a well trained dog. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> love it. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. I love that you're a good boy, but shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Postman, every time. It's the orange bag. I find that really weird with the orange bag thing. Our dog's got a thing about high vis. He goes mental when somebody's wearing high vis, and it's like, what? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Come back to what you were saying then. So Burnside's calling card, that just popped out of the box. That's weird. Wow. And then there was, do you know, this is really funny as well. Lockdown, I was probably one of the only people in the world that hadn't seen Game of Thrones. So no. when it was the first lockdown, we were like, yes, let's watch Game of Thrones. We can really, you know, this is the time. We can, we've got all this time. Yeah. Ralph Innocent, he was in it. He had a great part. Can I remember his character name? No, in Game of Thrones. In the bill, yes, he was playing Trent. And that was a storyline I had with him. And he was pretty nasty to McAllister and sort of held her hostage. That was in one of those. But every time I see Ralph Innocent, I'm like, oh, wow, that's 
that's him. He's got a really deep voice. I know he's he does loads of voiceover work. Amazing voiceover artist. Ralph is in. I know who he is in Game of Thrones, but I can't. I, I can see his face, but I can't remember his character name. Britannia Mania. That was Carl Halman. He played the nap, and the sort of all the sort of gangster type boys on set it was like a theater production that because it was quite you know feisty and you know, fight people <laughs> or, oh, yeah, no. sorry my my Maybe. dog's kicked off now it's a postman oh it's it's nothing it's probably just a bit of air <laughs> <laughs> just a feather passed by his face honestly he's such a kick off what's that dog on that advert and i always think of you going down the slide churchill yeah, yeah. It's him, the it? music, you know, the song is like roll, 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 roll. I sing it to the dog when I'm feeding him, and he's just like, <laughs> What is this? No, I, I love Reggie, I really do, but God, he's loud. I just, he's, I'm watching him out the window, he seems to be chilled. Oh, I've got another good moment that I was doing. Yeah, come on, of. go, go, go. This was a goodie with Diane Parrish, and the uh, guest actor was Lewis Collins. Oh, yes. Bodie from the professionals so we were so like he's on the, on the call sheet oh, it's Bodie and he was the call oh well for me he was uh I think he did he drive the Capri were you alive then <laughs> uh, I, I yes I was I remember yeah. uh, Bodie and Doyle absolutely I, see I I opted more for Doyle god like he's aged so well <laughs> I remember seeing that that call sheet and just being like that to you, oh my God, have you met Lewis yet? And everyone had, had met him and, you know, and, and he'd been around the building and all this like hustle and bustle, like, oh, we've just seen him, we've just seen him. Yeah. And I, I tried to stalk him out for days and, and got introduced to him like once. He was there for quite a while and I just bumped into him once. Very nice guy, but he, he was very different to on the professionals, I have to say. Yeah, he was, I think he'd lived in LA for quite a while as well. And I think he'd done the LA thing. So he had extremely white teeth. Yeah. He had um, a, perhaps a hair trogs plant or a syrup. We couldn't quite work it out. <laughs> Di and I, we, we obviously, we weren't, you know, being intimate at all. We were um, being very professional. And God bless him, he's, he's not here anymore. So he can't, um, he can't answer the question. But we did think, oh, it's going to fall off any minute now. Oh. So he was lovely. <laughs> and I tell you another, another person that really, I have a good memory of a visiting actor. And I always thought at the time, he is one to watch. And that is Russell Tovey. Do you remember being human? He was in that originally. And then there was this fantastic sitcom series called Him and Her. History Boys. If you've not seen him and her, watch it. Okay. It's one new sort of cup of tea. I just love that sort of comedy sitcom. Just set in a house in Walthamstow and two young 20-year-olds. And, and it's really shot within their flat. Brilliant. Russell Tovey. And I remember doing an interview scene with him thinking, Whew, he is good. He, yeah, and he is good. Who else? I remember Todd Carty joining. Do you remember Todd when he? No, he... I was gone by then. Oh, were you gone? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Todd was lovely, absolutely lovely. All everyone was so nice. The Juliet Becker story was funny. Now I was going to ask you about this. So I knew that we were going to be having a chat today, and because you had loads of storylines when I had left, I thought, you know what? I'll just see what Debbie McAllister got up to. Then I read that you'd had a lesbian affair with Ray Baker, uh, who played Juliet Becker. Yeah. And I went, oh, my Lord, I never knew that, because I, no. I missed that. I was just off, off doing mad things then and didn't watch the telly. How was that? I mean, um, did you have any say? Did they approach you with that storyline? Did you have any say in that? How did you feel about that? It was all right, you know. It wasn't, I mean, it was a bit like, what? How? Ooh, okay. Um, how are I going to make, how will I make this real? Because that's what we want to do, isn't it? We want to make the story believable. That's our job. So I think it was, I mean, there was my, my son ha does happen to find the kissing scene on YouTube and show his mates, which is pretty awful. <laughs> I'm never going to live that one now. But actually Debbie was she found friendship and and she just had this baby she'd gone through a traumatic time and she wasn't really a team player so to find 
a woman that she found this, I suppose, a, a connected spirit. She, uh, I mean, it was a bit hilarious. She, she, you know, she had the motorbike and the leather trousers and <laughs> and the hair flowing and the helmet went on and uh, just hilarious. We we did have a crack up. We laughed lots. Why not? Debs went the other way for a bit. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not going to say that next comment. I was just going to say, who's the better kisser then, Tom Chandler or Juliet Becker? Ah. Oh, controversial. Go on. Oh, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Jack? <laughs> <laughs> I will say that when the, we had our first kiss in the ladies' toilets. <laughs> No, so a memorial yeah. service and then in a lady's toilet exactly it's hilarious and we did it in one take obviously and uh, of course everyone was like oh come on do one more do another take so i remember ray baker we just were like we need a cup of tea we need a tea break first <laughs> we kept the boys waiting That's no it terrible. was all good jest and and that was fine and if i oh i you know, all this, there's now a sort of body conscious, I can't remember the term now, if you go on, if well, it's a job now, it's a job title where people oversee nudity scenes, oh. and kissing and, you know, this, so this, I remember. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was a job I did previous to the bill and I had to take my kit off and it was one of those recalls recently and I thought, crikey, they said close set. And they try and make you feel really comfortable that it's a closed set. But all that means is there's sort of polystyrene boards that have gone up and, and that's supposed to make you feel a bit more comfortable. I remember it was a thing I did with Rupert Graves. And now looking back, I just think I was, yeah, that was, that was a vulnerable position to be in. That wouldn't happen now. And the bill kissing Juliet Becker in the toilets, that wasn't such a big deal. But if, if you go back, you see how things have changed in the industry. It's so many things have changed. I think um, if we now got back into the industry again, so many things have changed. And working actors at the moment have said this to me because I've looked at getting back into it. And they haven't quite put me off, but it's made me think, is this something that I really want to do? And it's the speed now that everything is the pace of everything so i don't know about you natalie the, the bill was very hard i thought it was quite hard um to actually film that the pace of things at the moment when i speak to people now who are working and they say to me you get the script sort of you know the day before or they your agent will contact you to do a self-tape like today mm -hmm. and, and everything's now 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 it really wasn't like mm. that i mean with the bill there was no rehearsal I did jobs previous to the bill where, you know, you'd go off on a week's rehearsal. Patty Wainthrop, I used to travel down to London, they put me in a nice hotel for a couple of days and we'd rock up and, you know, we'd run through the scenes and we'd have lunch and mm -hmm. it was a proper rehearsal time. Then you'd go and you'd rehearse on set and mm -hmm. then you'd do the take and it was all very laid back and, you know, we had all the time in the world. Then it came to the bill and that was a step up again that was like you know bang 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 and i can imagine eastenders is another level again because it's all mm. multi-cam and all very fast but i just think today i would feel like a dinosaur because the way I, we used to work is very different to the way it's all done today and i think the social media side of it as well i don't know about yourself natalie but i think for me i've always thought wouldn't it be great to get into like i'm a celebrity get me out of here or dancing on ice or for me personally it would be like the sas one where they have to you know go with the sas and or, or ones like or hunted you know where they, they're dropped and they have to get to a certain point oh, no. and, and, and they're getting hunted i'd be good in something like that as opposed to you know anything else oh i'd be crap <laughs> Once you go into something like that, it's opening a Pandora's box that you can never close again. I'm in this position now in my life, and I don't know if you feel the same, where I can go into central London and go and do my job and nobody bothers me. Now and then I got the odd person saying something or, you know, 20 years ago were you this person? Yes. And, and it's quite amusing. But I can go to a restaurant and not get bothered. I can live my life without any hassle and remain private. And I think mm. to open that box and go into that celebrity world, I don't know whether that is for me these days. How do you feel about that? No, that's a no, no. I'd be crap in any of those anyway. I, I, <laughs> no, 
I I think that used to be one of our chats in the in the green room, wasn't it? How much? How much? How much would you do it for? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a price. I I like I like my life. Yeah. No celebrity. No. Not no. me. Not no. me. Couldn't do Not it. Not these days. It was great when it was in our day, though, wasn't it? When it first started, it was it was new. Now it's just become no pants. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you like? So when we were in the bill, did you enjoy going to the like award ceremonies and the parties and things like that? Loved it. And I remember the dress up, the glamour, the makeup, the lights and everyone. We, we'd all get involved with, you know, what to wear and ask the gorgeous makeup department to help us out and they'd do our hair do you remember it was all it was just such fun yeah. we were let out the building <laughs> and, and we used to do you remember we went to the national tv awards one year and we all yeah. met up outside the, the bill studios and there was limousines and we drove in limousines and we got out and, and 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 i say this now to my kids and they're looking at me like you did that i'm like yeah mum used to rock kids you don't realize but i wish i had the chance now to be me now having a go at it, but, but uh-huh. back in time. I wouldn't want to do it now. I wish it was me then at 45 uh, because, God, I wouldn't wear some of the shite I had on. <laughs> I look back at those photographs and that and go, for fuck's sake, what have I got on there? <laughs> me hair? I just cringe. So, I mean, I'm not gorgeous nowadays by any means, but God's sake, I look back and I, I, I'm I, standing next to you and like Lisa Maxwell and Sam Robson, these beautiful women. And there's me standing there like some ugly dipshit, like totally oh. out of a league. Oh. I like feeling like that as well. So I just, yeah, I wish I could have a go at doing one of those nights now. Yeah, just, that- just because I'd rock it now. And, and then I was like this rabbit caught in the headlights, totally out of my depth. Well, it was hard. You never had time to shop. I mean, we didn't do the internet shopping like we do now. Do you know what I mean? It was like you had to grab something in, or borrow something. Yeah. I love that, though. That was, that was a fun bit. And I remember Hartley and I, we did... Uh, do you remember, were you there that year where we did Best Actor? No. We had to walk down the stairs, these ridiculous about 80 stairs, to get down to the podium to then read on the um, national TV, NTA. So you actually, you've been on the stage at the uh, Royal Albert Hall receiving something for the bill? No, giving. It was Ah. giving the Best Actor Award, me and Steve. Oh, oh, that's brilliant. No, I didn't realise you'd done that. And walking backstage and sort of talking about fashion and, and sort of walking past Trini and Susanna. Yeah. And the pair of us were sort of, you know, no one talks as they're walking past and you think, I know what they're thinking. They hate my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she thinks I've got my shoes wrong. And we were like, yeah, we look good. We feel good. Come on, let's rock it. David <laughs> Jason. David Jason. That's who we gave the award to. Oh, that's, yeah. he's like a national treasure, that. Yeah. But I said it really badly. I went, ah, David Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it was crap you know when you look at, oh no no if I, I would love to do that one again say much more just to be able to go back to those moments and just redo it as yourself now I've got quite a few moments like that that I'd love to just go back and do that again can we have another take on that but just as who we are today it would be a, a different world wouldn't it yeah right, I've got to ask you Everyone's probably dying to know this because we didn't quite get there before. How did you get the part on the bill? What was the process for you actually landing, DS McAllister? Dear Park Studios. Yeah. Um, I think there were about three, three auditions. I think the first hurdle, second hurdle. Second hurdle, I think, was the pairing up. Did they put you with any of the current cast? And please don't say, yeah, you did a scene with me. Because I'll be like, did I? <laughs> it was you, <useless>. <laughs> <laughs> God. 